know why I pulled you over? I'm, I'm so sorry, officer. I must have uh, dozed off. Have you been drinking? No. Of course she has. Somebody has. I've been drinking. You all right? I, I, I'm, I'm not. Uh, How far along are you? I've almost. Ma'am, step out of the vehicle. Uh, Ma'am, walk to the rear of the car. Naomi. Are you... Naomi? Naomi! Sir, remain in the hey, car. Listen, she's, I will she's not arrest drunk, you, sir. Right? She's sick. 302. Can you roll Just me another unit? Not... Get back in the car. Naomi! Get out! Call an ambulance. It's small cell lung cancer. The tumor is starting to press against your esophagus. It hasn't metastasized, but it has spread to other parts of your lungs, so we can't operate. Wait, that doesn't make sense. She had uh, kidney failure and brain problems. Some cancer patients get what are called paraneoplastic syndromes. You were making antibodies to fight the tumor. They got sidetracked and attacked other cells. Your brain first, then your liver, kidneys, even the nerves that control your eyelids. That's called Lambert-Eaton syndrome. It told us the tumor was in the lungs. How bad is it? Small cell is the most aggressive kind of lung cancer. The five-year survival rate is only about 10 to 15 percent, which is why we have to start you on chemo and radiation right away. My radiation? What about the baby? You'll need a C-section before you can start the treatment. I can get you in first thing tomorrow morning. What are the chances my baby will survive? Pretty good. 28 weeks, so about 80 percent. No, wait, that's one in five chance he'll die? I really wouldn't advise waiting. Naomi, you got to start this treatment right away. What happens if I wait? Well, 29 weeks. The survival rate is closer to 90 percent. I'm not doing the radiation. You'll die. If you... Listen, you know the chances there are nothing, but a few more weeks will save the baby. Listen, you're depressed right now, and you're not thinking right. So could you just tell her, please? This cancer moves quick. The median survival's two to four months. If you postpone, even for a week, I'm sorry, honey. She's perfect for your trial. Oh. She's pretty far advanced. Well, you want easy cases, you pick the wrong specialty. Otherwise in good health? Excellent. When can she start? Angiogenesis inhibitors prevent the tumors from creating blood vessels. Without blood, the tumor starves. That sounds great. What about the baby? The treatment would be fatal to the baby. I've scheduled a C-section for this afternoon. No. It's in the trial phase right now, but so far, complete remission in more than 30% of subjects. I told Dr. Foreman I didn't want a C-section. When your chances of living were less than a third of what they are now. Baby is premature. Then our pediatrics department has the best neonatal ICU in the state. No, his lungs, his brain, he, he's not ready. Yeah, and he could be fine. You don't know what it's like raising a sick child. His odds are much better than yours are. You have to let them at least try this. Talk to her. Okay. Leave the room. How long have you been taking oxybutynin? Uh, since I was about 20. Incontinence is pretty uncommon in a woman of your age. It's even more bizarre in a woman in her 20s. I guess I haven't had the best luck when it comes to my health. Seems that way. You said to your husband, you don't know what it's like raising a sick child. You didn't say you don't know what it would be like. This is not your first child, is it? And he doesn't know. I 
I was 18. I got pregnant. I got married. I had the most beautiful little girl, Grace. She had infantile Alexander's disease. I'm sorry. For two years, we watched her die. My husband was a, uh, my first husband was a, a, a great guy. But after that, I couldn't even look at him without thinking of her. I left him. I left my job. I left everything. Very moving story. Explains why you're being so selfish. I'm willing to die to protect my husband. Because it's what you want. Your husband wants you to live. Well, he doesn't understand. Oh, who the hell does? Tragedies happen. You think that turning yourself into a disposable incubator for a few weeks is gonna protect your baby from all the crap in this world. Go ahead, die happy. I got no problem with people killing themselves, but don't think it makes you a hero. scheduled for 4 p.m. Honey? Are you okay? That's dropping <gasps> down to the A's. Stay with us, Naomi. What, uh, what's going on? We need you to leave the room. Respiratory distress. Could, could you just tell me what's going on? We're trying to find out. Here. Still kicking. Flash pulmonary edema. Lungs are clear. There it is. Pulmonary embolus. Gotta get it to an OR. Yeah, right uh, what happened? What happened? It's an embolism, it's a blood clot. It's fairly common with lung cancer. It's not a full saddle embolism, so blood's still trickling through. We've been able to get Naomi breathing a little bit. We need to remove the clot, and we need you to approve the treatment. Yeah, yeah, of course. Whatever you have to do, it's, just do it's it. It's not that simple. Yeah, the best course for the baby would be an immediate C-section. The longer we postpone, the greater chance they'll have brain damage from lack of oxygen. Fine, whatever, just do it. Here's the problem. A C-section would be very, very dangerous for me. Dangerous like what? In her current condition, it's a real chance she won't survive. I'm sorry. Look, your wife's unconscious. We need you to make a decision. I just want her to live. No C-section. Decisions and I'm right, and that's gonna be tough from now on. But this decision is easy. You know what you'd want. I can't do You make this call, only two things change. One, yeah, you feel guilty for killing your wife. Two, your baby lives. Naomi's baby lives. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Your boy's doing good. <laughs> 